This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing coming straight up out of that DMV. You know what it is. This that Baltimore designer right here. Come on now. Come and show some love and show some support. Go online right now. CoolGreenClothing.com and make your purchase. Oh yeah, by the way, if you ain't cool and getting the green, you're in a way. And that's just basic. I, I. What's going on, YouTube fam? Huh? This your boy Tony two times and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story and all the details in the case. For the day one fam, y'all already know it's all love. Thanks for tuning back into another episode. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. Oh yeah, definitely share the channel with your peoples. Everybody is welcome. Let's get right into the story. In life, if you believe in any kind of higher power, then you know most of the time, warnings come before destruction. For example, you could be a trapper that has had a nice little run for about five years. One day you wake up and it's business as usual. You grab some weight to go make a play, you get pulled over, and you dirty, riding with 20 years in the trunk. But the police gives you a warning about a broken tail light. Most would say that's a blessing and a sign that maybe it's time to slow down. But some individuals don't operate like that. In their minds, they see it as the complete opposite and feel either they are too slick to get caught or if they do, the charges won't stick. When I was up MCTC, Hager's time, I used to talk to different dudes that had been back and forth to prison about five to six times. I even had family that's the same way. And I used to always wonder, like, yo must really not value his freedom because it's not about being a sucker or scared, but who wants to be told what to do all day around men and away from their peoples. But in reality, it's really people out here that either have nothing to lose or even if they do, they move like they don't. Like my man A.C. Green say, the goal is to be cool, get the green, and stay out the way. But even though you are in full control of yourself and your actions, there's no way you can control others and how they move. And when you brush shoulders with somebody that's on go with nothing to live for, the outcome could be fatal. And on this episode of The Baltimore Way, we'll be discussing a case of an early morning gas station encounter that took a turn for the worse. Back in the summer of 2022, 23-year-old Darion Cephas had caught a lot of breaks to even still be a free man and able to navigate the streets. Darion had been having run-ins with the police since he was a hopper. In 2018, at 18 years old, on New Year's Eve, Darion and his peoples, a 37-year-old man named Charles, decided they would step outside with a few guns to let off shots to bring in the New Year's. About 8.35 p.m., BPD was riding through the 500 block of South Bentlow Street when they saw a man shooting a shotgun in the alleyway. At the same time out, the man tried to run back in the house, but police got on his heels. They entered the home to find Darion, then 18 years old, and Charles inside with a 12-gauge shotgun, loaded 22 rifle, a 9mm handgun, shells, and 22 zips of grass. Both of the men were already felons, and being that they had guns, they were both taken into custody. I'm not sure if Darion received any time for the situation, but bring it back to 2022. In March, Darion was driving in Brooklyn Park on a late night tip. It was like 1.30 in the morning when Anne Arundel County Police Department pulled them over. The police alleged they had probable cause to search the vehicle, in which they did. Inside, they found almost 10 zips of grass, 23 e-pills, a scale, and other items. The young man was again taken into custody, but would soon be released. A few months later, now in June, and summertime in the city, in another part of town, was a 33-year-old man named Curtis Lee Jones Jr., nicknamed Lil' Curtis by family and friends. Curtis, on his free time, was an event coordinator, designer, liked to cook, and was big on fashion. His main job, though, was at an adult daycare where he helped take care of the people who couldn't look out for themselves. On June 15th, Curtis was out riding through the city with one of his homeboys 
who we will call Tim, for the sake of this story. The man had been sliding through the city all night. Now it was early morning, close to 4 a.m. They decided they would swing by a gas station to grab a few things. Curtis and Tim pulled into the Marathon gas station on 427 West Marlbury Street around 3.52 a.m. As the men got out the whip, everything seemed normal. A few people outside, but nothing out the ordinary. As they were in the store, another man pulled up on a scooter and bopped in. Curtis and Tim kept doing what they was doing. They left out and started walking back to the car, but the man on the scooter was already back outside waiting for them. He opened the book bag and grabbed a gun. He first pointed at Tim, who was outside of the car. He took off running up the street. The gunman started chasing him, but couldn't catch up with him. After a few seconds, he stopped chasing him and went up to the car where Curtis was sitting at, walked up to the driver's side and let off multiple shots, hitting Curtis in the neck before fleeing the scene. Witnesses called BPD, who responded to the location to find Curtis unresponsive, suffering from gunshot wounds to the neck. He was rushed to a local hospital, but just 30 minutes later, Curtis unfortunately passed away from his injuries. Back at the gas station, BPD had no leads, no shell casings, and no one saw anything. It got surveillance video footage from the store and other local businesses. It showed Curtis and Tim into the store, then minutes later, the man on the scooter walked in behind them. Neither of the men had no kind of interaction or had no words with each other. It seemed like a random act. After zooming in on the suspect, the detectives noticed he had a distinctive tattoo and bandages on his hand. Also, the shooter left the scooter on the scene. After more investigation and help from the community, BPD pointed to the shooter being 23-year-old Darion. Already familiar with the man, he was quickly picked up and taken into custody. Charged with first-degree hit, first-degree assault, possession of a gun by a felon, and other charges. Just a few months after the incident in Anne Arundel County, but there was no motive for the shooting. As the case made its way to trial, Darion's attorney argued, even though he was picked out of a lineup, it really wasn't no physical evidence, but the state argued that was definitely his tattoo in the video, and it was definitely him who chased him down the street and who shot into Curtis car. In the end, Darion got smashed and received life plus 30 years after being found guilty on all charges. Rest in peace to Curtis. I send my prayers and condolences to his family. I'm not sure if Darion had some kind of beef with Curtis or Tim. At first, I thought maybe somebody saw the man and called him to the store. But let the court tell it, it was just a fatal encounter with no motive. If that was the case, that makes the situation super wild. Darion kept skating, ducking in prison, caught with guns, product, pills, and still was a free man. You would think most would be like, yeah, let me fall back just a little bit. I can vouch. Some people are dedicated to the street and the street life, which we all have choices and free will on how to live out here. You just got to make sure if you choose to live that life, you can live with life plus 30 years. Most feel like they can until they watch them calendars start to add up and you look up one day and realize you probably never going back uptown again. By that time, reality finally hits. Now it's too late. But hey, that's the Baltimore way. Man, rest in peace to Curtis. But I ain't going to talk too much more about this one. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. Y'all already know it's all love, fam. That's another episode of the Baltimore way. It's your boy Tony two times. I'm out.